say is that if you want to see bios for the speakers, go to digitsitsummit2017.com/speakers, and you can you can catch up. You can read more about the people who are presenting. So we'll start with Charlie <coughs> Officer Charlie Wakamatsu, Dustin Simmons, and then Ethan Fawcett. Okay, so. I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to do, but I'll talk a little bit about myself and what I do. But anyway, uh, Charlie Wakamatsu. I have been working for the Warren Police Department now for about 29 and a half years. I've been a police officer for about 34 years, no, 33 and a half years. Um, start off my police career in Honolulu, Hawaii. I've been uh, involved with a program, a uh, company program called Nova Principles. It's now the Nova Principles Foundation. We just became nonprofit uh, a couple months ago. And it's a program where we train law enforcement officers, uh, mostly right now in the state of Utah. And we teach them to go into the schools, to talk to kids in elementary, junior high, or high school about staying away from drugs, making good life choices, um, not being a bully, uh, don't join gangs, and being careful of the media that uh, they consume. Uh, it's, it's really a neat program, and I'm just been glad to be a part of it. We've been doing this uh, for 14 years. Some of you may know of Dr. Paul Jenkins, family and child psychologist. He's a business partner, social mind, and we created this program. Um, as I thought about the theme of this part of the last, uh, program, uh, about uh, the root principles of good citizenship, and, and then how do you cultivate these, these roots or these principles, it's like, wow, it could have been tailor-made more for the Nova Principles Foundation because that's, that's our root, that's our purpose, our mission is to help nurture, cultivate uh, youth to take advantage of all the wonderful opportunities that are out there to, to uh, get inside of themselves uh, internalized values and principles that are good and, and to basically be accountable, responsible for their choices and actions in life. And we do that through a series of lessons. Uh, we have. Uh, NOVA Principles is a principle-based program where we have these certain principles that we go over and talk and play games and to help solidify and, and get this information inside of themselves. Uh, some of the things that we talk about are our uh, principle of study the situation where you, we're trying to encourage the youth to think before they do. You know, don't do something and then think about it later, that's too late. Think about if it's good, if it is, then do it. If it's not good, then don't do it. We talk about cause and effects of things. Anything you do or don't do, something's going to happen. So use the study of the situation and cause and effects together to kind of help you make your best choices in life. Uh, along that line, we, we talk about uh, what we call the, uh, the noble long wolf. Uh, it, it's where we're trying to have the students understand that that if they're with their, their pack of friends and, and they're trying to get them to do something that's harmful, dangerous, or wrong, have the strength. To tell them, no, I'm not doing that, get out of there. And so we have some games and some activities that help strengthen this and help them learn how to be this noble lone wolf, which can be very tough, especially when they're with their peers and they're getting them on to do things, whether it's drugs or stealing or other kind of stuff like that. Uh, we have another principle called truth colors, which is basically what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. And we're kind of living in a, in a society today where that's getting all mixed up. I don't know if you've noticed that. And so we're trying to encourage the students to just understand, you know, stand up for what's right and stand against what's wrong. And we have some games and some lesson material to help them go towards that direction. We have another one, uh, life, uh, lifetime decisions, which are basically decisions you make that determine your success or failure in life. And, and be careful of the decisions you're making. Make sure that they're leading you to your path of excellence and success, not to the path of failure and destruction. We have another principle called the paradigm principle, where we talk about two different principles of a victim principle, oh, I'm sorry, paradigm, the victim paradigm or hero paradigm, where let's stop thinking like a victim, where it's why me, give up, why try, I can't, you know, it's your fault, you know, and uh, give me, give me, give me entitlement kind of stuff. Stop thinking that, which leads to a loss of freedom, getting stuck, and again, path of failure and destruction, versus having a hero paradigm in life, which is why not me? You know? <laughs> 
awful things happen to everybody. Why not me too? I, I will not give up. I'm going to try my best. Uh, um, what can I do for you, you, and you? And no, that was my fault. You know, that type of thing. And I'll try to learn from my mistakes and become a better, stronger person because of it. We have uh, another principle we talk about, which is knowledge is potential power. Uh, using knowledge gives you power. You can have all the power in the world, but unless you use it, you don't have any power. And I'm trying to get that principle to them. Use the knowledge that we talk about, about staying away from drugs and, and having self-esteem and this hero paradigm and, and keeping your windows of opportunity in life wide open. And uh, use that knowledge to do those good things. Because if you have all that knowledge but never use it, that's kind of sad. What good is it? Use it. Then we have another principle of uh, the boiling a frog analogy. Uh, you may have heard this kind of principle. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't really matter. But the concept behind it is really, really neat. Of how certain things can can just creep up on you over time without even knowing it. Like when do you know that you've got lung cancer because you've smoked too many cigarettes? When it's too late. When you know you're stuck in jail because you shoplifted or stole something one too many times. When it's too late. And so again, if you keep doing these things that mess up your life, you'll really never know when you're really messed up and in, in a world of hurt until it's too late, so be careful of those things. Uh, another one we have is which wolf are you feeding? Uh, which is basically there's two wolves that live inside us. One's good, kind, caring, friendly, and the other is angry, violent, filled with hate. Um, and whichever one you're feeding is the one you're becoming. So stop feeding the angry, violent, hate-filled wolf and feed the good, kind, caring wolf. And, and, which is Another thing we talk about is being the other side of a noble lone wolf. You know, not only just say no to your friends and the people you're with when they're trying to get you to do something harmful, dangerous, and wrong, but the other side is, is equally as good, which is you know be kind and friendly and considerate of others. Um, say good, positive things to, to people to help build them up and uh, to help them uh, you know, be a friend to all, rather than put people down and, and uh, be mean and, and things like that. Another one we have is garbage in, garbage out. In fact, that's, I just got through teaching that lesson at a school today. We had to rush here. Where we're talking about media issues, TV, movies, video games, the internet, music awareness with all of the violent, vulgar, indecent, obscene, nasty, pornographic stuff in the media today. Um, there's not very many people speaking against it. And so we, we try to do our best to help these students understand that there are some really, really wonderful things in media, just fantastic. But then the other thing is, is there's the harmful, dangerous side as well, where if, if they get involved with, they could really mess them up as too. So be careful with these kind of things. And that's pretty much what we're trying to do with the NOVA program, um, spread throughout Utah, parts of Arizona, and we're just still trying to grow. And again, we're a nonprofit organization now, and so we're trying to do the best we can with that. Thank you. Want me to go? Okay, right, okay. Uh, I'm Dustin. I'm going to stand maybe a little bit. I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm the dean of students at Major Prep, uh, where Becca goes. I'm also Becca's soccer coach, so I know her really well. Um, this idea of citizenship and what it means. I'm a huge proponent of all education is self-education. I can teach you things, but I can't really educate you. You have to want to do that. You have to learn on your own. Um, and it's so important, talk about citizenship, to learn what that is. And where do you learn what that is? Um, Thomas Jefferson, who's kind of a big deal, um, said that in a republic where it's not to be ruled by force, but by reason and persuasion, the study of reason and the ability to reason is paramount. And the place that you go to do that, according to Thomas Jefferson, is the classics. So you go and you study what other smart people have said about things to learn how to do that. Um, and, and so it seems to me that if you're trying to learn what citizenship is and, and where you want to go, you study what really intelligent people throughout the centuries have said about it. What did Plato say about it? What did Aristotle say about man being a political animal and how man is designed to live in a society with other people and what does that mean and how does that work? What does Cicero say about the duties of a citizen? Cicero talks about how the duty of a citizen to his state, right, 
for a Roman, Roman, right? So for Cicero, the duty of a Roman is to roam first, then to himself. There's this idea about, well, what's what I'm comfortable with, but that might not be the best thing for Rome. I want to, I want to talk about that. How does that work? How do those ideas make their way through Machiavelli and Locke, Rousseau, Montesquieu, James, uh, John Adams, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson? Um, those, are, those are big things, right? And so if, if we want to reason, if we want to be able to think, we have to have something to think about. Um, we've all been there. I'm there more often, probably than most of you, where we, we act and we say things without reasoning through. We haven't really... And for me, I'm still waiting for Twitter to come up with the edit button. They have other things that they're doing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right? Because I always, I've got this great tweet, and I tweet it out, and as soon, as soon as I hit send, right, and it pops up, oh shoot, that's not exactly what I meant. Or there's a typo in it, or something, right? Or my reasoning is off. Um, we have to have things to reason about. We have to have stuff floating around in our minds already. Studying the classics, the value in that is it, it becomes the water we swim in, right? And we get rocked back and forth a little bit. If you've been to a wave pool, you've spent time in the ocean surfing like that, right? And you get back and when you're done and you lay down at night and you still kind of have that little feeling a little bit. It's a cool feeling, especially if that rocking is the great history, literature, and ideas that's, that have been passed down through the ages, if that's what's rocking you to sleep tonight, at night, if that's what's filling your mind, if those are the things that you're reasoning about, you're probably going to be in a really good place to then move forward. <clears throat> Use those building blocks and those foundations because they're sure, they're strong, and they've lasted for a long time. Um, the other... The other idea that occurs to me in a society where we need to come together and have conversations and discussions, and sometimes those happen face to face, sometimes those happen in a classroom with Nova kids, oftentimes in here it happens in that digital space, those conversations need to happen, and conversations have to happen. Yelling at each other and shouting over each other, and whether, whether that's in person or I'm pounding it out in all caps on my keyboard, that's not communication. Um, reactions are instant and comments are immediate. And I think it's so valuable and, and an important role of citizenship is you, you can't just read the classics and then spout them out. Right? The, the classics aren't there for you to use as a hammer to bludgeon someone over the head with, no, see, Cicero says this, so you have to believe me. George Washington believed this, so you have to believe me. No, you read with those guys, and, and, you make, and then you adjust and you react to them. Right? You don't bend Thomas Jefferson to your will. Right? Maybe it's the other way around a little bit in certain regards. Um, but you have to think and stop. And I love what Becca said about before you do anything, you take a second. There's a, there's a tremendous difference between <coughs> reacting and responding. Right? And that space in between those two areas, I work with teenagers, right, at school. They, they're learning that process, right? They react really, really well. And one of the things that, that I've seen, technology seems to be an amplifier of who we already are. Right? Social media, is it, 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 you don't become a new person just because you get a Twitter account or Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook if you're older or you know, whatever. Um, technology just amplifies who you already are and so you need to be in that habit of ponder, reflect, and listen and then respond. Because otherwise those conversations don't happen. We just, we just shout into the void or we shout over each other or we yell at each other and no conversation happens. And in a society where we're supposed to come together and have a conversation to improve our little corner of the world, that's important. And we can't do that if we have nothing to reason about and if we're not taking the time to think about it, ponder it, and then respond. Yeah, 
I'm, uh, my name is Ethan Foss. I'm going to stand up because I don't like sitting down when I'm talking to people on a stage like this. Uh, I have a kind of a wide variety of experience. Uh, when I was 16, I got into the political realm. I worked for various different organizations as an intern as, and as an actual employee. And uh, today I'm part of an organization called Lionheart Mentoring that hosts events and works with youth both in like group and one-on-one -on -one settings to help them really change their perspective so that way they can see uh, the possibilities of, of the good in the world and the possibilities of the good that they individually can do uh, as opposed to focusing so intently on all the bad that seems to be out there. Uh, it was mentioned uh, in the last panel how it seems like the, the focus of social media and the news seems to be so negative. Uh, and so that, that, that has affected uh, my, my generation quite a bit. But the cool thing is that it doesn't have to be like that. See, the, the question on this panel is good citizenship. And so because, uh, because of my kind of varied experiences, uh, I, have, I have a little bit of a unique perspective. So like for a, a good citizen, I, I basically, you know, just asking myself the question, what is, what is a good citizen in just a normal, Civilization. It seems that a civilization is something we're all in, and so in order to be a good citizen, you have to contribute to the civilization. It seems to me that in order to be a good citizen, that essentially means being a good person. But then you get into the ballpark of what, what does being a good person even mean? And there's this really cool book that uh, that I that I've read in the past and I reread recently. It's uh, by he's a professor at BYU. Uh, or at least was, uh, he wrote this book called Bonds That Make Us Free. Has anybody here read the book Bonds That Make Us Free? We've got a few people in here, good. Uh, so there's this concept in it called self-betrayal, and I want to talk about it real quick, uh, because uh, it really kind of is very important, at least to me when considering the concept that you just mentioned, how technology amplifies us. I, I believe that very strongly. Technology is just a tool that amplifies each individual, because that's what civilization is, is a, is a whole bunch of individuals who are contributing to a society. And uh, this, this concept of self-betrayal is, uh, is essentially how people get to the point where they're internet trolls, if that makes sense. And it applies in a lot of situations, but I just want to focus on that at the moment because where the digital citizenship is kind of the focus of, of, this, of this summit here. And, and essentially how it works is, uh, I, I used to unfortunately get in uh, quite a few political debates on Facebook because uh, you know, growing up I reacted quickly as, because uh, I'm still only just shy of turning 20, so I am very, still very recently have reacted quickly as many teenagers do. And oftentimes these conversations would go something like this. I would present a point and the person would present a counterpoint. And then I will add a little bit more energy to my point, because I'm right, and the other person has more energy to their point, because they're right. And eventually, it doesn't matter who's actually right, we're just yelling at each other, and somehow I got called a Satanist. Um, <laughs> and, that's, and so what really happens here is uh, the concept of self-betrayal is portrayed in this, in this book, uh, well, through many stories, uh, because the, the writer was a uh, psychologist, uh, or psychiatrist, one of the two, I forget. And uh, he, uh, he put these stories with, of course, not the real names, uh, with permission of his, uh, his clients. And there was this dad that uh, was sitting, in, uh, he got home after a long day of work, he got, uh, came home, sat down, and started watching football on TV, which is one of his favorite things. And his daughter came in and was like, Dad, I need help with my math homework. And, and he's like, not now, uh, go ask for, for your brother. She left and came back. To he, he can't help me, I need your help with this math homework. And he was like, listen, your, your teacher taught you this stuff in class, go do it yourself. Came back with this back and forth of, no, you were told to do it, you can do it. This is your job, you go to school to learn this, I shouldn't have to help you. Because at the very beginning, he said that he, he decided essentially that he didn't want to do it and he wasn't going to do it. So he, he started having to tell himself this story of self-justification of why he wasn't helping his daughter. And at the very end, he actually ended up yelling at his daughter. Uh, just she just wanted help with her math homework. So how did he get to her dad, to the guy that was yelling at her? And it's because he made one incorrect choice, and he started, uh, and that choice betrayed himself. He started telling a story to that continued to betray himself of who he really was. 
And so what tends to happen is, uh, at least as I've found in my personal life and, and watching and studying uh, through books and other people, is we have these little decisions that we make about people that tend to throw up walls between us and other, other people. And those walls begin to uh, tend to create a fog between our minds and their minds. And, and before you know it, we're not seeing them as people anymore. We're seeing them as, them as objects. And it doesn't really matter how you treat an object. And the reason I'm talking about this, and the reason I think this is so important, because this is really the foundation of a good society, is people that are able to interact with each other in a mature and responsible manner. People who are able to say, you know what, you're a person, I'm a person, we might have different views, but those views are helpful in coming together and building a better society for us all, for the next generation and for the world as a whole. And so one thing that I want to basically ask is that as we're going through, let's uh, try to think about different ways that we can help people connect with each other. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow night at the Youth Extravaganza, how connection is so important, specifically in, in terms of overcoming addiction, because that's one of the things that I speak to, uh, to youth and adults about, is, uh, is my story in overcoming addiction and the different tools that I use to, uh, to overcome addiction to pornography, which I want to talk to many of you here about. The connection is so important, and a lot of the youth today are very, very isolated, very disconnected, whether that's because they're just on their phone all the time and not actually connected with people, or because they just don't feel like they have somebody they can not talk to. And so as we talk about these ideas, let's try to figure out ways that we can communicate and really connect with youth. And I have a minute left, but I don't really feel like I need it, so <coughs> thanks, everybody. so much for the perspectives. Isn't that amazing? Can you please give him another round of applause? Okay, so we're going to take that. You can go ahead and go back to your table.